Good morning. My name's Sarah Jane King. I'm a member of the congregation here at St. Paul's. And um, over the past few weeks, we've been looking at a series of parables that is found in Luke's Gospel. And this week, we're looking at this parable that is all about prayer. And you might find it helpful to have your Bibles open at the page um, with the passage on it. It's 1052 in the Church Bibles. So Jesus tells us a parable about a widow, yep, there she is, who comes to a judge with a problem. And as with all his parables, Jesus uses the stuff of ordinary life to help us understand something about him, something about his father, about our father. And so he sets up this situation where there's been some kind of dispute, we don't know what, but we have an injured party, a widow, who is looking for justice. And we hear that the judge that she goes to refuses to listen to her because he doesn't care about God, he doesn't care about people. So he refuses. And he says, in, in the version we read today, it says, um, so that she, I will give her justice so she won't eventually attack me. In um, the translation I had that I was preparing it from, it says, so she won't eventually wear me out with her complaining. But there's this idea of the guy being, you know, pestered and who. So he's not a good person, this judge. I mean, she gets justice in the end, but this is a pretty bad sort of situation. And I like this picture because there she is, this lone plaintive lady. There's this uncaring guy. He's got quite a sort of fancy robe on. There's somebody else who's trying to pull her away. And if we hear this parable with the ears of the first disciples in first century Palestine, it's even worse because it's the judge's job to administer justice. He's meant to listen to her. And all the rules for how to resolve disputes are set out in the Torah. That's God's law. Um, and, you know, in fact, it shouldn't even be for a woman to be going to a judge in the first place. That's something that men do. So normally she would have had a son or an uncle or a brother, but she's got no one to go to. She's completely alone. We don't know why the judge ignores her. Maybe he's taken a bribe from somebody. But in the end, in the end, she does get justice. But it's a shabby, shabby sort of situation. We can go to the next slide. I don't know, don't know how well you can see that with the light, but it's a, this idea of widows and orphans and foreigners. That's something that recurs throughout the Old Testament. These are people who need special protection. There's even a, a, a verse that's Deuteronomy 27, 19. Um, Cursed is anyone who withholds justice from the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow. Because these are the people in society who are particularly vulnerable. They have no land, they have no rights, they have no means of generating income. They're, they're alone, they're vulnerable. But this judge, he only, he only grants her justice because she keeps coming. Go to the next slide. Yeah, so Jesus wants to draw us attention to, to the persistence and the pleas, and he says, how much more will God give justice to us? You know, if even this unjust judge gives justice, how much more will, will God give justice? And this kind of parallels the teaching earlier in Luke's gospel, where he talks about God as a father. And, and he says, you know, who of you, if your child asks for a fish, will give them a snake? Or if you ask for an egg, will give them a scorpion? How much more will God give good gifts to you? How much more will God grant the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And that's what he says here. How much more will God give justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? So Jesus tells us always to pray and not give up. Now the next slide. Yeah. Don't be anxious about anything. This comes from Paul's letter to the, to the Philippians. He says, don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, present your requests to God. And this is part of our faith, that we keep clinging on to this God whatever happens. But then Jesus poses a question at the end of the parable. Now the next slide. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find us trusting God and in that relationship of prayer with him? Because Jesus knew that his disciples would face hardship and persecution. Following Jesus doesn't mean that nothing bad ever happens to us. Huh? We know that. We all face difficult times. 
But the question is, do we actually talk to Jesus about our struggles? Do we really allow him to minister to us, to console us, to guide us? Do we draw closer to him if we entrust him with our difficulties? When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? I mean, I don't know. I, I ask that really quite seriously. Do we really believe that? Um, in the part, pa passage just before this, before Jesus tells this parable, he's been talking with the Pharisees who've asked him about when the kingdom of God is going to come. And there's this whole passage about when the Son of Man comes again. And do, do we really believe? Do we really trust this God enough? And today, you know, we're thinking about this Thy Kingdom Come initiative. We're thinking about praying for people who don't know Jesus. And I wonder whether this is, in fact, one of the hardest things to trust God with, to pray for people we love and care about who are currently rejecting Christ or who are not interested in Christ. Because it really hurts when we love Jesus and someone we love doesn't. It really hurts. And we can't help but worry that if we then entrust that person to God, and then that person doesn't come to faith, well, we're going to have to question this God that we've built for ourselves. You know, what kind of God is this? Can we really give that to him? And I suspect that for many of us, it's easier to pray for situations that are hundreds of miles away than it is to pray for those who are actually the nearest and dearest to us. Unless we're in some kind of crisis situation, and then we pray. Oh, yeah, then we pray. And then here comes the even harder bit, because God doesn't always answer those prayers straight away, and not in the way that we like. And that makes it harder for us to trust him. You know, there's still a war going on in Syria, despite our prayers for peace. And a group of us gathered in the church centre to pray for Rosalind. She died. And what happened in Manchester last week? You know, where, where was God then? Where was God then with those people who, who died? Why didn't he just stay the killer's hand? And I wonder if that's part of the problem. You know, we have lots of answered prayers. We know that. We can catalogue them. Little things, big things. Yeah, I know God's been with me. He's been faithful through all the ups and downs. But we still see wickedness and injustice and so we wonder, can we really trust God with the most important things of all? The lives of the people that we love. The possibility of them really knowing life in all its fullness. Knowing that unconditional love that's just so beautiful that we can't speak. In fact, maybe we're sometimes even afraid to deepen our own relationship with God because we find it hard to believe that something so good really could exist. That, that really could be for us. So we kind of keep God in a distance. He's, he's somebody we talk to on our terms, you know, in a, in a sort of a box. Because that's comfortable, that's easier. We'll just park him over there. But that means we miss out on good gifts that he wants to give us. And he wants to give to others. Sometimes we don't ask because we fear we won't get But Jesus, of course, knows all about prayer that wasn't answered in the way that he would have liked. Huh? Take this cup from me yeah, in the Garden of Gethsemane. But still, he trusted his father completely and he kept on praying and he kept exhorting his disciples to pray. And here he tells us, pray, don't give up. It's really hard, but let's keep asking God for what we long for. Let's not hold back because it's too precious to trust him with. Let's keep bringing it to him. Don't give up. Now, that's not to say that if we feel we haven't prayed for somebody, that we should be beating ourselves up about it, because that's a trick of the devil who just wants to wear us down and undermine us and discourage us. Let's not have any truck with that. You know, if there's somebody on our heart where we think, yeah, I should have prayed for that person, then let's bring that to God. Let's ask his forgiveness and let's accept it. That's why Jesus died for us. We, we are forgiven. We can start over again. And, and God will lay people on our heart and we can pray for them. We can pray for ourselves that we all enter more fully and more deeply into this 
this lovely relationship. Can I have the next slide? Oh, one back. Yeah, that's it. Prayer is part of a relationship. And this, I just think this picture is just lovely. It's Jesus with a little child, and they're in a lovely garden. The child sees a little squirrel, and they, they're, just, they're just there. They're, they're, just, they're just together. They're just there. And Jesus tells us that God grants justice. He grants this relationship. He, he grants what we cry out for. And he, he says he'll grant it quickly. Well, I don't know about that. You know, not in the way we understand quickly in this world of kind of instant gratification and rolling 24-hour news and checking Facebook to see what somebody did, you know, five minutes ago. I think God might have a different watch. But, you know, if we're talking about life, life in all its fullness for all eternity well maybe for god that is quickly but we know that we know that god is faithful the other thing i struggled with when preparing this thing about this passage is well why do we need to pray at all you know because god knows what i long for well i've got two children graham and max and i know what their needs are you know they're six and seven i need to cook for them i need to wash the clothes i need to take them to school but we'd be a funny sort of family if we never talked to each other, if we never listened to one another's stories. And yeah, that's what God longs for as well, that we just come to him, we spend time with him, we listen to him, we, we share, share our concerns with him. I don't know how prayer works, but I know that God does something with us when we pray. We come closer to him. I wonder if there's something about when we're communicating with God in prayer, we're in this space where there's just no room for the devil and his lies. You just can't get into that. Jesus said to the disciples in the garden, pray in order that you won't fall into temptation. And, and when we're praying, we can't be in temptation because it's just, it's just us and God. We're in that safe space. We can ask for things that really matter to us. We can be vulnerable with him. So let's keep praying. For that unbelieving spouse, that parent, that sibling who thinks that this is all a load of bunkum, that friend who doesn't see their need for Christ, who doesn't know the joy to be found in him, that child who drifted away from church and just isn't interested. Those leaders who surely would do more to remedy injustice if they only saw the world through Christ's eyes. Because nothing's impossible with God. He answers prayer. Even if it takes a bit longer than we might like. Jesus says we mustn't give up. The answer will come quickly. Because as soon as God says, yes, the time is right, he will act. Because he loves us. And so this week we're starting our week of prayer here at St. Paul's. We're joining in with this global initiative, Thy Kingdom Come. We're going to be really intentional about setting aside time to pray for our friends, our family, our colleagues, people who don't know Jesus, to pray for the mission of God's church on here on earth. And last week after the service and online, people have been signing up for prayer slots to commit to pray for half an hour this week. You don't have to come here. You don't have to come to the church centre. You can do it at home or wherever you are. But it would just be lovely if you would join in with that. Either have a look at the website or come and find me after the service. I'll take your details and we'll sign you up for a prayer slot. And a bit later in the service, we're going to be making together prayer bands to be really intentional about people to pray for. We, you see on the notice sheet, we've got prayer walks going on. We've got an event in the church centre. So there's, there's lots going on, really. You know, let, let's be part of it. But why this week? You know, why the week between Ascension and Pentecost? Is that just a coincidence or is there something more to it? Well, in the short passage Nicola read to us, we hear that Jesus, who's been raised from the dead, he's appeared to his followers, has ascended into heaven, and the disciples have returned to Jerusalem. And Luke tells us they stayed at the temple continually praising God. In Acts, he tells us they were there constantly in prayer, and they're waiting, they're waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit that will empower them to speak about Christ to bring his love and his healing power to every nation. So they're in this kind of in-between time, this kind of thin space between the risen, ascended Christ and the not yet of the coming of the Spirit. And we're in a kind of in-between time too, because we know 
the reality of Jesus. He's, he's dead, he's raised from the dead from us. He's ascended into heaven. He's seated at the right hand of God and his new creation has begun. But we know he'll come again. We know that God's kingdom will reign on earth and there will be no more weeping and toddlers drowning in the Mediterranean and women being trafficked. That will no longer come, but we're still in that in-between time and there's still war and illness and wickedness. And so we long, we long for the coming of God's kingdom. We long that the kingdom of God would be in the heart of every single person here on earth. So let's, like the first disciples did 2,000 years ago, let's use this time to pray and let's be persistent because that's what Jesus tells us when we're really intentional and we keep coming, when we cry out to God day and night, he will answer so that when he comes, he may find faith on the earth. Let's be expectant because we can trust God with our lives. We can trust him the lives of those we love.